Okay, so what's the point of this? Well, um, I guess I'll say a little bit first. We've only got half an hour, so I'll try and be brief. There's a question. I think we should resolve it. Maybe it's not even difficult. Maybe it's already in Watanabe's papers. It's just a matter of understanding how to use them properly. Um, so the question I want to pose is about the free energy approximation. And I guess I'll just state that the most general form that I know of is stated in the WBIC paper. Uh, hmm. So let me just get that up and then I'll so I'll be sure to write it correctly. Uh, so the sort of main texts for singular learning theory, uh, Watanabe's book, um, as you know, Algebraic Geometry and Statistical Learning Theory. There's the Green Book. What's that, Edmund? Mathematical Theory of Bayesian Statistics, is that That's correct. Um, so that's more recent. Uh, I think what I'm about to say probably is in the Green Book. You can tell me, um, but uh, and then there's also an, a very important paper which is probably more widely cited than either of those, which is um, a widely ap applicable Bayesian information criterion. So maybe I'll put those um, up on the board just so we can refer to them. So there's uh, so algebraic geometry and statistical learning theory. There's the Green Book. I won't say the title again. I just say Green Book, and this is Gray Book. <laughs> uh, Dan, sorry to interrupt. Are you attached to the all? Oh, I'm not. Yeah, thank you. Well, I am, but not as... Thanks, yeah. Not as speaker. Okay, so there's the gray book, there's the green book, uh, and then there's the WBIC paper, which, um, what year is that? 2013. 15. What year is the green book, Edmund? Do you know? Off the 18. 18. 18. 18. Yeah, okay. So that, that must subsume the result I'm about. I'm more familiar with, the, with this um, paper than the green book. Right. For completeness, I think it's uh, 2009 for the gray book. Oh, thanks, yeah. Okay, so the formula, I'll write the dummies version first, but the formula I'm referring to is free energy is approximately some error um, plus lambda log n. And you know, there's, there's actually more than that. Uh, there's lower order terms, but this is error. This is entropy. Okay, so I'm just going to, let's just call this the free energy formula. Okay, so uh, let me explain the where the proof of the free energy formula is. Uh, so the most general form, well, uh, maybe I should. Uh, I don't know how much setup to give. I think it'll be useful to give a little bit of setup if we're going to discuss this over several sessions. So just bear with me a second and I'll. Um, because there's there's some I mean there's if you look in the in the gray book there's a formula which is main theorem six point two and corollary six point one for this that has the empirical entropy in it and then if you look in the WBIC paper in that position in the formula there's n l n w hat and those are the same if k n is zero and so on and that's related to realizable versus unrealizable which is kind of the point here so uh, I think it's worth to avoid confusion on those points just um, just recapitulating some basics here, if you'll bear with me. Um, can you guys still hear me? I'm actually not in Roblox on my laptop. I can still hear you. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, so, uh, so recall that, so Kn 
the empirical KL divergence uh, is defined for a sample to be uh, to be this. And then if I just expand that, it will be So this here is usually denoted uh, Sn by Watanabe. This is the empirical entropy of the true distribution. And this is uh, log loss or negative log likelihood. So this is Sn, uh, or negative Sn rather, right? Um, There's a W in the second term. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Oh, in, also in the question up there, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, um, all right, that's the first reminder. Uh, okay, so then the posterior, um, PW given the data set DN uh, is by Bayes rule equal to, to this here. Where phi is the prior, Zn is just the, the normalization constant, so it's the integral over um, everything of that term there. So this is the partition function. Uh, but notice that I could replace this term here uh, with Kn plus Sn. And then I'd have e to the minus n k n, and I'd have e to the minus n s n, and that would be independent of w. So that could come out the front of this integral if I switch this for a k n. Right? So there's kind of some uh, some slight differences there, depending on whether you use k n or or s n. But I think we'll stick with um, Watanabe writes z n zero for the version that just for comparison to the gray book where both appear. Maybe it's worth writing. So. Uh, if you were to do that, you'd get you'd get this, which is what um, what Anabe calls the normalized evidence or normalized partition function. Okay, um, now I'm going to switch to making a statement. So this was just a reminder. I'm going to switch to making a statement about the free energy that's in the uh, WPIC paper. This cites a bunch of Watanabe's papers and the gray book, but the proof, I guess, is in the renormalizable condition paper that Edmund and I like to worry about these days. Um, but I'm not, I'm not even sure about that. So that's one of the things I want to discuss, like where actually is the proof of this? Uh, but with the notation I just introduced, so LN, then the Bayes free energy is minus log uh, the integral product I equal one to N. Okay, so how does that relate to what I just wrote on the board? Uh, well, if you look at that formula, I guess it should be visible on the screen for Zn. Um, if I do e to the minus n lnw, well, lnw is uh, equal to 1 on n sum over i log something. So I multiply that, multiply that by n um, and get rid of the minus sign and then uh, take e to the power of that. I'll just get the product of it xi's, right? So uh, this is minus log zn. I hope the minus signs worked out right there. Somebody tell me if they didn't. Um, okay, so this is the integral over all of w. Now, what we're concerned with, I guess, here is the fact that, well, this integral often in physics, you don't do it over all of w. You do it over some 
subset of W. So you could say V and W is uh, some compact subset. You might say something like the free energy of V is uh, minus log the integral of the posterior uh, over V. The point being there that if you were to integrate the posterior to just find out how much probability mass is contained in that over v, well, that would be e to the minus fv. So that kind of acts as a a, um, a coarse graining of of the energy, something like that. So that's the thermodynamic way of thinking about it. Okay, so that's F, the free energy. I'll just stick with integrating over all of W for the moment, but we're, we want to work towards uh, something that's you know sort of talking about this for various reasons. So what Watanabe says in the WBIC paper is that, um, he says, recently it was proved that, and then afterwards he cites like five papers spread out over 20 years. Recently it was proved that the free energy is equal to n ln w0 plus lambda log n plus op log log n. Uh, I never remember what op means, um, so maybe I'll recall it for you in case you're similarly disabled. Um, so a sequence of random variables is, is op1 if... Uh, I'll just write it. I think this is right. So think of the, uh, if you were to visualize the, the, the random variables being on, I mean, this random variable, the norm of Xn, Xn is some vector possibly. Um, that's a, a random variable valued in non-negative real numbers. If the density looked something like this, so that's x1, that's x2, uh, you can make sure there's not much mass in the tail for any n uh, by uh, going far enough along. Okay, so this is uh, I mean, the probabilistic version of saying it's of it's of constant order. So what this means is that there's there's some term here of of order uh, of order log log n. So in asymptotics, you have you have the n term, you have the log n term, and then this is a lower order. So to, to order log log n, the free energy is given by, by this expression, and that is what I meant earlier when I wrote something like this. Right? So there was some term plus lambda log n. And the hypothesis here is uh, where w0 minimizes the KL divergence from a true distribution to the model. And lambda is the RLCT, of course. Uh, any questions at this point? Comments? OK, so immediately after that statement, he cites a bunch of papers. Uh, let me just check them. So 2010A, which is uh, the renormalizable condition paper. Oh, I didn't add that to the list. Maybe I maybe I'll do that in just a second. So this is the WBIC paper. Uh, so this one's, I'm not going to write the whole thing, asymptotic learning curve and renormalizable condition. I think it's the only paper that has renormalizable in the title by Watanabe, maybe. As far as I can tell, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the renormalization paper, OK. And that's, that's 2010A um, in the WBIC paper. So he cites that for this free energy formula. He cites 
2009, which is, of course, the gray book. So let's see. Let me put these up on the board with that claim over here. Uh, so he cites the, the renormalization paper. He cites the gray book. Uh, what else does he say? 2001A. That I, that's algebraic analysis for non-identifiable learning machines. I feel like that's actually not relevant. Or I think he's just listing a bunch of stuff. I don't see how that is. That's even, I mean, that's a, that's a very old paper. In 1999, that's algebraic analysis for singular statistical estimation. So I feel like those two, I don't see why they're cited. I don't think they're relevant. Someone can... Okay. I think there's a sense that, that like he's citing the genesis of the idea of using algebraic geometry in in all this um, right uh, just basically explaining where the lambda come from yeah I think that's right um, okay so let me say what I think is in the gray book uh, well so there's there's two things to say right there's what problem do I think we should solve uh, and what is known? Maybe I'll say what I want first, and then well, I will briefly comment that this formula is definitely proven in the gray book when this here is just equal to NSN. Well, uh, how should I say this? That's not quite true. Um, OK, so the gray book proves this in the realizable case. That is, when it's possible to realize the model, the true distribution by the model. Um, so when when k of w0 is equal to 0. I mean, kn of w0, of course, may not be equal to 0. But, um, OK, so that's the version that Watanabe is. That's in main theorem 6.2 and corollary 6.1. Uh, but he's stating a more general fact here, which is that even if you can't realize the true distribution, uh, it's still true under some conditions. Uh, maybe I'll come back to those. So the WBIC paper, actually, I'm not even, maybe actually in the WBIC paper itself is, a, is another proof of this. I, I'm not sure. Um, OK, so that's another thing I'm confused about. Um, all right, well, before I be any more precise about what's known and what's not known, let me say what I want and why. Okay, so consider, consider a situation with, uh, with two phases. So what I mean by that is, an, is a, uh, a distinct area of posterior concentration. We can be more precise than that, but uh, that'll do. Um, so I'm drawing these kinds of pictures in DLT 1, 2, and 3, but uh, okay, so maybe Maybe this is W0. Well, let's, let's just stick in the realizable case. So maybe there's W0. And if I were to draw the posterior, you know, the posterior is concentrated along W0. And uh, very concentrated near this highly singular point here. But nobody says there isn't other areas where the posterior is. Uh, of course, the posterior depends on dn, right? So you, you sample dn, and then you get some distribution over the weights. Well, as n goes to infinity, this disappears. Right, they can't, nothing that's a true parameter can have the posterior concentrated near it as n goes to infinity. One way of thinking about that is remember the posterior. Uh, the posterior is is roughly 
e to the minus the free energy, right? So uh, to, for the posterior to be large, you need this to be large, which means you need the free energy to be small. The free energy is roughly speaking um, sort of loss or energy plus lambda log n, and this term here has got n times ln or n times kn, depending. Okay, so as n goes to infinity, uh, this term is much more dominant. So to have low n, you need this to be zero. Okay, so as for n very large, you, this, this can't contribute. But for n finite, it's certainly possible for there to be an area of posterior concentration, which is not on w zero. And, uh, you know, see Liam's thesis for a, for a concrete example of that. So this really happens. And I want to know, well, what, what is the free energy? I mean, what does the posterior asymptotically look like there? Or similarly, what does the free energy look like over there? So I know that on W0, I mean, the asymptotic formula we have that I just cited was for the, was, uh, was for the integral over all of W, right? That's, that's what Zn was about. But you could do the same trick. I mean, if I were to, if there were some multiple com multiple interesting places on W0, uh, I can run the same integral, but for W prime. And, and it all works, I believe, and gives you a formula which would, you know, you could say near here, you're going to use lambda and near here, You'll, you'll see the same formula roughly, but with W with lambda prime. So that's a way of comparing how the free energy or posterior behaves near different points of W0. But, but what about this? So my question is, uh, what is the free energy formula? For phases, areas of posterior concentration not on W0. So i.e., um, if you were to define, let me call this region out here something. Uh, we call it P, maybe not P. Call it mm, not Q. Rho or density. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want I want the set itself. Maybe V. Right. Okay. Maybe V is okay. Uh, thanks. The, um, okay, so I could take Zn of V, be the integral over V dW P dN phi W dW. And then I could define Fn of V to be minus log Zn of V. And I'm asking. What is the asymptotic formula for that? Okay, so that's my question. Uh, you know, you might think it it could be something like the the earlier formula, right? It could be that f is something like ln. I mean, w hat that would be you know, over here, maybe. Uh, the point that minimizes the KL divergence on V plus lambda V log N plus OP log log N, where lambda V is, you know, the RLCT of uh, of the KL divergence minus this smallest value. So this would be non-negative on V, and you could blow it up and compute the RLCT. So that would be, you know, a reasonable guess, and that's a kind of heuristic that's stated in some of my notes and so on, and, and used in some way to try and compare phases, etc. Um, but I don't know if that's true. I, I think that is true as long as we believe the, uh, the that that formula holds for the unrealizable case, because this is equivalent to changing the uh, uh what is it the prior to by, by multiplying it with a cutoff function cut off cutting off um v that's right so it seems 
since the WBIC paper covers at least part of the unrealizable case, there's some condition, it does seem like we should, in principle, be able to just apply the WBIC paper to right, that modified prior, or if you like, changing W to be V. Yeah, I think that's, it seems like hopefully true, but I, I don't know where the statement in the, I don't understand the proof of the statement in the WBIC paper. So I think Edmund's right that in some sense, I hope that we can just apply that statement. Uh, but then I, I want to be sure that however that's proven that we really know the hypotheses are true. Um, and I, I don't want to just take for granted what's stated in the WBIC paper. So I, all, I either want to understand I mean, maybe that there's an alternative proof in the WBIC paper itself. There's certainly something in there that might be relevant or in the renormalizable condition paper, or maybe it's in the green book. I don't know. Does the green book reproof? Uh, I yeah, I think so. Chapter five. So the, the, the green book sort of start off with, um, it did, didn't start off with the realizable assumption. And in many cases, um, W zero has a different meaning, meaning it's, uh, it's frequently uh, the, Verbatim, the the parameter, the set of parameters which minimize the average log loss function. So, so basically, um, W um, minimizes KL divergence. Um, and then in theorem eleven in chapter five point three, um, that formula that you just wrote up there is um, written down verbatim. So where is that? That's uh, I'll just write this up. Chapter five point uh, uh, five point three. Um, theorem 11, chapter 5, theorem 11, page 153, if you are using the same version. Okay, so green book. Sorry, say that again. Chapter 5. Chapter. Yeah. Uh, theorem 11. Theorem 11, okay. So... Um, so in that case, W0, it just means the set which minimizes the KL divergence. Is that right? Capital W0, yes. Yeah, okay. So you think that just, uh, well, okay. So you think if we apply that, but we change the prior in some sneaky way, or we just uh -huh. <laughs> take the model to be V as the space of parameters. Um, yep. Yeah, it, okay. It's a little bit meta though. Like, I don't know. Like it, it definitely needs to need us to go through it in a careful way to see whether anything breaks. Um, yeah, I think that's a good starting point. So uh, maybe that's that's the question mark to start with, and that that comes with understanding the um, understanding the proof. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't notice how much time we'd used. I'm going to have to go to start up the. The, the code session in Discord, um, but feel free to keep thinking about this. Are there any quick questions before I go? Okay. Um, yeah, sorry to leave unceremoniously, but um, uh, you can ask Edmund for clarifications, I think, if you, if you want to understand this further, and we'll continue uh, next week. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, uh, thank yeah. you. Thanks, Sam. Man, so in the green book, he really labels the theorems and propositions separately. What do you mean, theorems and like, propositions? I'm trying to find the theorem 11, and I'm seeing definition 16, or maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, so, yes, definitions. Okay, yeah, you're right. Uh, definitions, yeah. and I think... Uh, this is a peeve of mine. People who do this... <laughs> Wait, wait, which, what, what is your preferred um, way? Uh, just everything in this, in, in, this is, any way is fine just as long as I can find it without having to keep track of, like, the last theorem, right? Oh, I see theorem 9, all right. So I'm, I'm, Page 153. Thanks, just got it, all right. Cool. Also, a, a word of warning, though, that that, that chapter is um, is before he even discussed any um, uh, what's any resolution of singularity. Basically, he says, uh, "Let's look at the standard form. Let's look at normal crossing form, and then a mm -hmm. um, bunch of theorems about normal crossing forms." 
and before uh, and in the next chapter he says something like by the way this is this normal crossing form is the most general you can get because you can always blow things up um, mm, um, so so uh, yeah and also this is uh, uh uh, we, we still have the problem of localizing, uh, so that there's no charts or anything in here. Um, so that's that's in the next um, chapter as well. Mm, I see. I guess uh, I guess I'll read this sometime this week. <laughs> we'll right. Discuss it yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, chapter five. More or less, I mean, I guess I'll have to go back and see where, where it makes sense to start reading. Because it was like, okay, okay. Uh, this book is a bit more statistical than geometrical. Um, yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, it discuss. It it doesn't quite discuss any of the geometric results. It, it just cites them. Um, Particularly galling is that he, at some point he comments that the gray book is for non mathematician. <laughs> the gray book is what? It's for non mathematician. <laughs> 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 that was, yeah, that, that, uh, that undermines my confidence a little bit. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, I haven't looked at the green book. I mean, I downloaded it at some point because I'm looking at my, obviously, you guys mentioned it. Um, all right, I guess I guess chapter five is probably going to be a good read. I'll probably start there and take a look. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think chapter five is. Um, I, I haven't read through it like very carefully. Um, uh, yeah, I think chapter five is definitely sort of is is rather independent. From previous chapter, okay. Previous chapter discussed like um, what about Bayesian statistics that we care, uh, that we should care about, um, and chapters five discuss um, that form specifically, the the normal crossing form. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then I, I guess uh, I guess do be careful though that uh, the green book, uh, since chapter one. Um, uh, did not have the reali realizability assumption um, straight away. So um, maybe uh, where is that? Um, hmm. Where is that? Um, right. So, so in chapter three, I think chapter three is where he lays down um, the the things that we care about, like mm. um, like. Uh, the, the observables, the uh, generalization error, etc. And in chapter three, um, uh, in the first, yeah, in the first few, in the first few um, pages, he deals with the uh, relationship between true distribution and statistical model. So basically, that's where he did define um, regular model, singular model, and that's the same as the gray book. However, um, the thing that is drastically different from the gray book is that he defines um, the conditions, uh, the realizability, unrealizability, and uh, he carve out another huge part of unrealizable case, uh, something he called, uh, I guess it's like the renormalizable case, um, but he calls something like uh, essentially unique case. Um, so basically, when things are not realizable, uh, then the the minimizing set, the W zero minimizing set, does not need to have um, doesn't need need to be the, literally the same uh, distribution, even though they all minimizes the distance. Um, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and and apparently that's a, a pretty 
uh, difficult thing to handle. So basically, he carved out saying that we, we're we not discussing that first. Uh, we we just deal with the, the case when that is actually um, uh, the minimizing set is a unique distribution, even though it is parameterized by multiple parameters. Oh, I see. So that's the assumption to kind of get things to work 